good day to all this is sanjay sir and today we are going to discuss about the ninth unit of cambridge as level section that is algorithm design and problem solving so in algorithm design and problem solving in the ninth unit it will be divided into two sections the first one is computational thinking skills and 9.2 algorithms in today's video we will be discussing about computational thinking skills when we are talking about computational thinking skills first thing that we should know is abstraction you should know what abstraction is abstraction is one of the key concept of object oriented programming languages and it says its main goal is to handle complexity by hiding unnecessary details from the user now abstraction is going to show you only the simple parts whereas hiding all the complex processes that is happening in any programming language now if i take a normal day to day life uh, object now let's talk about a car if I, i know when i take the key or press the power button my car is going to start so that simple thing is what we know when i press the power button the car will start but what happens inside the car to make this engine keep running is a very complex process there are so many things that are there so many processes that are involved that is happening inside the car to make this car start but what we see is only the pressing of the button so the complexity inside the car is hidden and showing us only the dashboard which is a very simple task for us to do that is called abstraction let's talk about a coffee machine instead in a coffee machine when i wake up in the morning and go to a coffee machine i just know i have to add in some water and some coffee beans and when i press or when i choose what type of coffee i want this coffee machine is going to prepare that coffee for you now what is happening inside this coffee machine we don't know we just know when i choose when i put in the correct ingredients and i choose what type of coffee i want it is going to come out as the on as the output so this concept is called abstraction so why is abstraction very important in programming when i need to do certain tasks let's say for example i need to print an output now if i want to print an output or something on my console screen what i would do is i would use a simple code called print or maybe a code say right line in visual basic print in python and in pascal we use write statement now this simple statement is going to give us an output on our consoles but what codes are involved in making this output come on the screen is very very complex but we don't have to know what these codes are we just have to know when i use this code this is the output that I, that i'm going to get so i really did not want to know what is happening inside but if i know what a uh, output i'm going to get from this function that is enough for the user so it is making this abstraction concept is going to make it easy for any programmer to write his program because the complex parts are already written by someone else this concept of object oriented programming 
is called abstraction. Now let's look at the benefits that we have by using abstraction. The first one says the code is more simpler and easier to read. As we saw earlier, the code that we are going to use is going to be very very simple. Maybe one or two lines. But what is happening inside is not known to the user. So the code that we are writing for the user, it is going to be a very simple code. So you don't have to know very much in deep of the programming language that you are going to use for your programming. The second one it says, rather than writing long codes, complex functions can be written in just one or two lines of code. Now, I told you this abstraction is going to hide the complexity. For example, now let's say the print statement consists of 100 lines. Actually, to do a print function, we need to use 100 lines of codes to do it. In my program, in 10 different places, if I need to print something, I would need to write 1000 lines. If I have to do it manually, I would need to write 1000 lines to do this task. But since we are using abstraction, since this code is already written by someone else, I just have to reuse it in my program in 10 little places or 10 lines and do the same function. So the codes, the number of codes that we are going to write in our program is very much less when we use abstraction. The third advantage is reusability of the code. We know this abstraction, the complex parts is already written and kept in a place called the library. So whenever I need to use this function, whenever I need to use them, what I do is I would reuse them or use a copy of it to do my task or to do fulfill my task. I'm going to use a copy of the already written code and use it in my program. So in any program that I'm writing, I can use the same part wherever I want it. That is called reusability of the code. And the other benefit is the user does not need to know how it works, but rather need to know what it does only. So we don't have to know the complex part, that is how it is going to do this task, but we just have to know that it is going to do this task. So these are the benefits of using abstraction in programming languages. Now let's see how abstraction would be like in a programming language. Now here I have used Visual Basic for this. In this, I have created a class called Bank Account. The class starts here and ends here. And this is my main program. Now to use this bank account class in my program, what I should do is I should create a variable of the type bank account. So how I do that is, let's say dim, I will say for bank account ba as bank account and I'll say this is a new bank account that means I'm creating an object not the original bank account I'm creating an object of bank account in my program and using the dot operators I can access whatever I have inside this bank account now the functions that I have inside the bank account or the methods called balance, it's a public method, another public method called post interest, another public method called post deposit, which is going to take an argument called amount in, which is a decimal value, another public uh, method 
saying post withdrawal and that is through going to take an argument fine now if i try to access this account balance i will say va dot account balance equals let's say 2000 now it's going to give me an error here it says account balance is not accessible and you can see they have used the word private here okay so how can I change this account balance I have a public method called post deposit so what happens after you deposit a value is what is written inside this method so what happens is if I deposit an amount the account balance will get updated to the original account balance plus the amount that you deposited it with because you have not declared any value for account balance here it starts with zero so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use ba dot post deposit method and I'm going to deposit 2000 here okay so I'm going to access the public method to deposit or change the account balance to whatever I want and let's say before I deposit what should be my balance now if i say if i print this balance method it's going to return the account balance to me so what i'm going to do is i'm going to console dot right line ba dot balance so i'm going to print the balance before I deposit here okay so if I try to run this I will get zero as my balance now let's say after I deposit I'm going to use the same statement here after I deposit 2000 rupees now what my account balance is going to be now it's 2000 earlier it was 0 now it became 2000 now what happened here is I accessed this account balance or when I deposit money into an account what should happen inside the deposit method is not known to me here but what should happen is written here but I cannot see this here since I written it in the class I can see it here but the classes that I'm going to use in my program all the classes that I'm using in my programming are not visible like this so whenever I use a class written by someone else I do not have to know what is in these methods now let's say I have a class called mathematics in that if I have methods like the deposit method here if I have methods like square root or finding the modulus all these methods will have a number of lines of codes to do that particular task but in my program after I create an object of my mathematics class what I have to do is I just have to call the square root method or I just have to call the modulus method in just one line so whatever the lines that is happening inside this whatever that should happen inside this is not known or we don't have to know this complexity we don't have to know we just have to use them in our program that is how abstraction works in any object oriented or any programming language so that's it for 
today's video. In the next video, we will be discussing about decomposition of a problem or understanding a problem or decomposing a problem into smaller parts using the top-down design and solving them. So, until I meet you in the next video, this is Sanjasa signing off. Take care and God bless you.